Hey everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. I'm very excited about the topic. Today I'm talking about fairy tales, and I love fairy tales. I've loved fairy tales ever since I was a little girl. I read fairy tales all through high school, and even I took some of my very favorite fairy tales to college with me. Uh, those are one of the first books that I read to my children and my, my boys. I read fairy, tale, fairy tales to them every single day. And it actually paid off because one of my sons, he actually is considered, he is a professor at Salisbury University, and he is actually considered one of the experts on fairy tales um, in the United States today. I'll tell you a, bit, a little bit more about that, but you know, how can you possibly read Snow White, Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, Sleeping Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, all of those without falling in love with these characters? Well, I'll tell you, there are some parents that don't particularly like them. They don't like the idea of hocus pocus and fairy godmothers. But think about this. I think we all would love to have a little hocus pocus in our lives, and I, for one, would love to have a fairy godmother. So what, um, what is the biggest thing about fairy tales that as a parent we need to know and understand? Okay, basically the parent says to the child, it's a great world out there. You're going to accomplish everything when you put your mind to it. You could be first person on the moon. You could uh, come up with a, uh, you know, something to help the common cold, to prevent it, to cure it, so on and so forth. Well, the fairy tale doesn't say that to the child. The fairy tale says to the child, it's a cold, cruel world out there, and it's waiting to eat you alive. But if you have courage and if you persist, you can overcome any obstacle and you can conquer any foe. And best of all, you can reach your heart's desires. So if you have problems with fairy tales, uh, there's a book, Bruno Bellaheim's The Uses of Enchantment. Uh, he's a child psychologist. He actually went through the Holocaust and he ended up writing this book all about fairy tales and about why fairy tales are so important to a child. Do you remember the first fairy tale that you had read to you as a child? I remember mine. It was this one. This isn't the exact book, but I found this in a used bookstore. And I remember even the day, it's very clear to me, even as old as I am now, I remember when I pulled this book off the shelf of the library and I opened it to this very first page and I fell in love with how gorgeous and beautiful Cinderella was. And when I read this book, I know that during the 80s, there was a period of time where the feminists didn't like it because all of the um, stories you had, you know, the, had this hero, so the women were saved by the handsome prince. As a child, I remember, I didn't think of that. What I thought about was, if I was really good, that good things would happen to me because I saw Cinderella, she was really good to her stepmother and her stepsisters, and she was obedient and kind and meek and all of those things, and eventually good things happened to her. So think about those, but fairy tales teach the child that there is a struggle, that life has a struggle to it. But if you have courage and persist, you can overcome those struggles. Think about Snow White. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the struggle was that she lost both of her parents, her wicked stepmother, and there always seems to be a wicked stepmother, banished her, actually wanted to have the huntsman kill her, but she ran it off into the woods. She met seven friends, and oftentimes in fairy tales, there's other people that will help them. Now, even though Harry Potter is not considered a fairy tale, even with Harry Potter, the emphasis is over and over again, Harry, you have help. You have a lot of people who are rooting for you. You have friends who are behind you and who are supportive of you, even though there are challenges and struggles. And a fairy tale says that. Now, a fairy tale also says that the meek can, can succeed. As I mentioned to you, that was Cinderella. Cinderella was meek. She was kind. She was very quiet, very subservient. But good things happened to her as well. Now, as I mentioned before, um, fairy tales um, usually always boast a hero, a heroine, or both. When you have the story of Hansel and Gretel, in the beginning, Hansel is the hero. He gathers the pebbles, and he's able to drop those pebbles so that he and Gretel can get back to their home and to their father and, unfortunately, their wicked stepmother. Now, the second time, though, Gretel becomes the hero or the heroine because <clears throat> the Wicked Witch has caught them and she's going to eat Hansel. And so Gretel, with using her wits about her and her courage, she uh, pushes the evil uh, witch into the oven. And then they go back to their father. And luckily, <laughs> the Wicked Stepmother has died. <clears throat> so 
there's always a happy ending, and that's why at the end of every fairy tale, it always says, and they lived happily ever after. All right, let me share with you a couple of books. These are books from my childhood. This one is now available. This one is The Golden Book of Fairy Tales. I had this book growing up as a young child. I was around nine or 10 years old um, when my, my parents bought these books. They actually bought them for my um, sisters, but I thought, I remember them getting them for Christmas and thinking I'm the one in the family who loves fairy tales. So I took them over. But these books went out of print for quite a while and they were very, very expensive on eBay. They are now, this particular one is now back in print. If you go into my uh, protected resource library, you will find this or you can go onto Amazon, but I have a whole list of all different kinds of fairy tales. Now, these two books actually were together, um, and this one has not been put back into print. This one has the Snow Queen and, and other ones. These are more of Hans, Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales. But these are two books that um, I loved. I love this particular um, author, and I love her illustrations. And a lot of times you purchase the book because of the gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations, particularly in fairy tales. I, I love to have beautiful illustrations. And I love Scott Gustavenson's books on fairy tales. Now, his books have beautiful, gorgeous illustrations. And the one thing that I like about his is that he offers some of these beautiful illustrations in really big, um, uh, you can purchase these in really big, huge prints. I have four of these in different fairy tales, Jack and the Beanstalk, um, <coughs> Hansel and Gretel, uh, the, um, goodness, I can't even remember them. But anyway, there's four. We have four of them, and when I'm dead and gone, my kids can fight over them. But they just, you know, oftentimes when people go into your home, your home is a reflection of who you are. And the reflection of our home is, is that we love books, we love music, and we have those big, huge uh, fairy tale pictures up there. So embrace fairy tales. And again, you can go onto my blog, and I have a whole blog about the importance of fairy tales and the uses of enchantment uh, in terms of a child's development and self-esteem. You can all, there's also videos attached to it. And also I interviewed my son, Ryan, about fairy tales. And we had a, a 45 minute discussion about the importance of fairy tales. And you can access that on the blog as well. Let me leave you with this quote by Albert Einstein. If you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. And I totally agree with that. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.